do you know what this is? I was born and raised in Brazil, and so it wasn't until I moved to the UK that I first heard about the deliciously fruity hot cross buns. They are typically eaten around Easter to mark the end of Lent, and as you can see, the cross at the top hints at this religious connection. But what's the story behind them? Well, there are many theories on Google claiming the buns can be traced back to the Romans and archaeological sites such as Herculaneum or the Saxons honoring Yosta, the goddess of spring. Well, although people have marked food with crosses for centuries across the world, it's said that our modern version of the hot cross bun was first created in the 14th century by a monk at St. Albans Abbey. And here's the truly exciting part. For the first time, we're taking this journey on location. So luckily for me, I live nearby, so I can just pop over and ask them all about this theory. Hello, lovely history fans. I'm Dr. Julia Martins, and I'm a historian of gender and medicine. I'm interested in how people thought about the body in the past and how that affects the present. I also just love eating and cooking and learning all about historical recipes. And that's what we're doing today. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more history videos. You can also help support my work on Patreon. It's thanks to my lovely patrons that I was able to film my first ever video on location. So I really do appreciate it. Now, off we go to discover the delicious secrets of the hot cross bun. Off I went to St. Albans, a city steeped in history where every cobblestone tells a story of the ages. So here we are at the St. Albans Cathedral, let's go in! It was here that I hoped to uncover the origins of a beloved Easter tradition. Little did I know a remarkable encounter awaited me. I found none other than Brother Thomas Rockliffe, a 14th century monk whose legacy is intertwined with the very story I sought to explore and Brother Rockcliffe was ready to unveil the tale of the hot cross bun. Well, hello there! Oh, hello! Hi! I'm Julia, what's your name? I'm Brother Thomas Rockcliffe. Nice uh, to meet you! I'm the baker here at the monastery. Really? What, what are you making today? Well, I'm going to make some buns. It's coming up for Easter, as, as you know. And it's a tradition here that we give away some food to the poor. And I had this great idea a few years ago of making some buns, but making them a bit special. So I decided to, well, add some spices to it. It's very simple. So what, what spices are you using? Well, first of all, I've got to make my dough. And okay. that's very simple. I've got my flour in here and water, just a basic, basic dough. Um, and you need that. But I need some yeast for this too. Fortunately, the bakery outside, do you know, we sleep above the bakery. It's oh, the warmest really? place, yes. Oh, um, that must smell nice. But we need some yeast. Uh, fortunately, next door is the brewery. And when we do the first mash, the foam at the top, that's a natural yeast. And so, use it for baking. And then I've got some yeast to carry on going. That's so add fantastic. the yeast, flour and water, then it's a special bit of spices. Now, so what spices do you have very, there? Very, some of them are quite simple. Um, you perhaps look, this is, this is... Cinnamon. Cinnamon, that's cinnamon, yes. And this one, you may... Oh, you know, cardamom? Cardamom, yes. And we grind that up. Mm. But this one, you will not know. What is that? Well, it's a secret. A secret? We just come over here just a minute. Grains of paradise. Grains of paradise? Yes, yes. No, it's like What's that grains of paradise? Well, it's like a pepper. Mm. And it comes from... Uh, Africa, Afrique, and I grind that up. Add that to the mix too. Now, we do have a vineyard here at the monastery, and during the summer months, I can dry some fruit, but it's quite expensive. We don't often put fruit in, but I've got some fruit here, some dried Oh, exciting. Dried what, grapes what are you? there. Just dry, dried grapes. Grapes. Yes, we're, mm -hmm. we're doing that. But the special thing is, it's Easter. Why not put a cross on it? That's what I thought. And so here I've got some. These have just come out of the oven. Um, there's a cross on the top. So a simple bun. These ones I put some fruit in. They, so They look delicious. So the cross symbolizes the passion of Christ. It does, yes. And of course, these are best raw. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If you do have any butter, it's quite common. We've got dairy as well. Brilliant. Have some butter with them too. 
Well, they look fabulous. Thank you so much for telling me all about them. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Well, I agree with that. You smell really nice. Oh. After stepping back in time with Brother Rockcliffe, it was time to explore the present-day understanding of the Alban Bun. I turned to Stephen De Silva, an expert with deep insights into St. Albans history, for an interview in one of the cathedral's serene chapels. Hello, so we're here at St. Albans Cathedral with Stephen De Silva, who is a, a tour guide here, and I'm going to ask him all about the Alban Bun. So hello, Stephen, thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to Talk to me in this beautiful, beautiful cathedral. Yeah, thank you. We're here in this lovely lady chapel of the cathedral. It's stunning. So what can you tell me about the 14th century Alban Bun? Well, it's a wonderful story. We're told that Brother Thomas Rockcliffe in 1361 on Good Friday bakes some spiced buns marked with the sign of the cross that he can give out to pilgrims and to visitors to the refectory of St. Albans Abbey, because this was a huge monastery, on Good Friday, 1361. That's the story that's come down to us. I see. That's incredible. However, just to let you into a secret, we can only trace the evidence for it back to 1851. Oh, really? What's the, what's the document you have? We have a, a baker's handbill from a baker in Soho in London in 1851 who promises that he will bake his hot cross buns in the tradition of Brother Thomas Rockliffe at St. Albans. If we could get earlier than 1851, we'd be delighted. Yes, I'm sure. And speaking of um, different kinds of hot cross buns and later, I noticed this one's they don't have the traditional piping that I see in contemporary supermarket and bakery ones. So why, what's the difference? Why? Well, definitely in the Middle Ages, nobody piped these crosses on. They were slashed into the bun. So the baker took a knife and literally cut the cross on. Uh, and then when the dough rose, it rose with the shape of the cross in it. That was one of the big differences. The other one would have been the spices that were used. So now I think it's time for us to try this original Alban bun. Can we share one? Yes. Is that okay? That'd be great. Oh. oh. That there we go. delicious. Oh, thank you. Okay. Mm. There we go. Mmm. I love, I love the, the mix of cinnamon with the cardamom. You can really feel it. Mmm. Mmm. Thank you so much. I've never eaten in church before. <laughs> 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 Not sure we're allowed to do that. But... I can really taste there's something I can't mm. quite mm -hmm. place. I know there's cinnamon, I feel the cardamom and, um, and the um, raisins, but I'm not sure what is it that I'm feeling. There's, there's an unusual spice in yes, it's it. Called, smells... It's called grains of paradise. You can still buy it online, really? uh, but it's very expensive. Um, grains of paradise had a lovely legend attached to them in the Middle Ages. Um, the spice traders charged a lot of money and they said it was because grains of paradise only grew in the Garden of Eden. Oh, wow. So no. And, yeah, and then they floated <laughs> down... Accessible. No, they floated down the rivers into East Africa. They were collected in East Africa. And it's a sound of peppery spice. Actually. Yes, yes. Can you taste it? Yeah. It's delicious. And yeah. it was sold in, in Europe at a huge price. Um, no average person would ever have grains of paradise in their house. Quite. But... A monastery kitchen would, because abbots, particularly the abbot of St. Albans, they were, were quite important people. Therefore, yes. they'd have had a high-status kitchen full of gorgeous spices. So, yes, you're tasting the mystery grains of paradise. And I imagine there's some symbolism attached as well, right? Because, there is. Because if we are talking about Easter, the Passion of Christ, the cross on top, then, of course, having a little bit of evil yes. in your bun. Well, well, it's even closer than that. If you think about what happens on Good Friday, the crucifixion of Christ... What Jesus says to one of the criminals being crucified with him is, today you're going to be with me in paradise. Oh, wow. Well, so yes. the, word, actually, the word paradise actually has a very specific Good Friday reference. That's interesting. I, didn't, I had, hadn't thought of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fascinating. <laughs> well, this one tastes like it comes from paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so I also read, and I'm curious to, to know what you can tell me about that, but in the reigns of Queen Elizabeth I and James I, uh, that there were quite a few restrictions around hot cross buns, and I was wondering why that is. Does that have to do anything with the Reformation, maybe? I think it does. These buns had become so popular and were so associated with religious faith 
that I think some people use them as almost like talismans. They kept them in their house. They believed that if they had one of these nailed up in their kitchen, their kitchen wouldn't catch fire. Really? Of course, fire was a big danger in those days. So I suppose they started to stray into what I would call superstition. Mm. And along comes the Protestant Reformation and Elizabeth and James are very keen on squashing superstition. Yes. So they restrict the sale of these. You can have them Christmas time, Easter time and at funerals, but they're not to be made at any other time in the year. I see, so they had this talismanic, almost medicinal properties, people believed. I, I read somewhere, I think that our sailors would take them when they would travel, right? Yes. Like sea fairy was so dangerous. So was that true then? That was true, yes. yes. It was something they took with them. And in fact, there is a, a, a pub in London which actually has uh, many of these going back a long way because the tradition was that this widow who had a son who was a sailor would give one to him and she would place one in her local pub as a kind of um, hope that he would return safely. Uh, and so for a long time, there was a whole collection of rather old, stale, up cross ones <laughs> in this London pub. But it was remembering the old lady's fond hope she wouldn't lose her only son. That's so touching, yes. You can understand how she would really hope for his safe return and sort of, you know, if, if this can add any kind of protection, yeah. why not? I mean, you know, we say love you in baked goods all the I time, mean, don't yes, we? Yes. Birthday cakes. Well, baking is definitely a love language. It's a, it's a love yeah. language and I think it, sure. it goes a long way back. Well, thank you so much, Stephen, for you know taking the time to show me around this beautiful, beautiful cathedral and for telling me all about the Alban Ban. They, they are such fascinating, real pieces, bites of history. So thank you so much for sharing all about them. Thank you for talking to me. You're welcome. What I enjoyed learning about the most was probably the pub in London with hot cross buns hanging from the ceiling. It's just such a unique testament to the enduring love for these buns. Um, and the grains of paradise, that was such a revelation. They're not just a spice, they're a piece of the bun's rich history and they add such a distinctive flavor. Discovering these bits of tradition and history has been an absolute delight for me. So the Alban bun, and hot cross buns in general, really took off in the 18th century, as we can tell with nursery rhymes such as hot cross buns, which indicate just how popular they were in London at the time. In a 19th century newspaper article, it said that In the year of our Lord, 1361, Thomas Rockliffe, a monk attached to the refectory at St. Albans Monastery, caused a quantity of small sweet spiced cakes marked with a cross to be made. Then he directed them to be given away to persons who applied at the door of the refectory on Good Friday, in addition to the customary basin of sack, wine. These cakes so pleased the palates of the people who were the recipients that they became talked about, and various were the attempts to imitate the cakes of Father Rockliffe all over the country, but the recipe of which was kept within the walls of the abbey. So with colonialism, these buns spread throughout the world, taken by the British, from America to Australia, Pakistan and South Africa. Regional variations appeared using local ingredients. I personally would be happy to try them all, especially the Jamaican version using molasses and served with, with cheese. That sounds delicious. Uh, but in any case, it's easy to see how, even though it was first created centuries ago, the Alban bun and its descendants, all kinds of hot cross buns, are alive and well in many countries across the globe, going beyond a religious symbol to become a marker of community identity, something that brings people together, full of history and also innovation. And it's also just delicious. If you're not from the UK or a country where hot cross buns are common, let me know in the comments if you had ever heard of them and whether you've tried them. And if you did grow up surrounded by these delicious buns, let me know what's the best way to eat them. I personally think just butter is the best way to eat them, but I know not everyone agrees. And if you like the variations, just, just tell me which ones do you like best from chocolate to blueberry. I'm also planning on making them at home, so let me know if you have any favorite recipes. I heard uh, Mary Berry's is nice, but you know, let me know if you have any other suggestions. Thank you once more to the St. Albans Cathedral and its lovely guides for welcoming me and sharing their knowledge. And thank you so much to my lovely patrons for your support. I really appreciate it. It's what made this video possible. Don't forget to give a thumbs up to the video if you enjoyed it and to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you would also like to support my work, please consider becoming a patron over at Patreon and help me buy more hot cross buns for research purposes only. 
of course. Anyway, see you next time. Thank you for watching.